Oh, we're rolling. Hey guys, welcome back to yet another Red Cape Sports video. My name is Bird Bouchard. Today is going to be a really cool and interesting episode. Uh, the economy slowly but surely is starting to open up, which means sports card shops slowly but surely also opening up. So today we're outside our sponsor Frank's FNC House of Cards and we're basically just going to do vlog style of checking out cards. So come on and join me. And then there's Zach Hyman. Look at that, right there. These I didn't grade. These actually on console. Most of these ones down there. It's just funny. Like it, it, it got a side. ten, right? So yeah. conspiracy theory is is Bird Bouchard getting ripped off on his gradings? Who knows? You know? Who knows? All right, guys. Welcome to the card shop. Along with me, we miss this guy Frank. Um, and today, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like we got some. PC personal recent pickups. Mm -hmm. um, let's let's start it off uh, with my top hand left and your right hand bottom. Uh, looks like we've got some some OG Wayne Gretzky cards that weren't thrown against the wall, that weren't put into bicycles uh, wheels. Um, what does a card like this go for? Uh, depends, like the shape it's in. I'm basically saying that these should be sevens or eights. If that pans out, we're talking about somewhere around two, three thousand dollars. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm definitely not selling them as they are. They will definitely go to Graven first. The difference is massive. If I was to sell them as they are right now, I wouldn't get more than three, four hundred dollars from them. Right. Yeah. And then of course, grading. You know. Yeah. Obviously, going to do wonders to that. I mean, yeah. Wayne Gretzky, probably the most sought-after hockey card of all time, at least in my opinion, one of them. For sure. One of two, yes. One of two. Uh, yeah. Bobby Orr's Bobby card Orr's, is yeah. pretty nice as well. Uh, I was fortunate enough to see one of those. Uh, I'm pretty sure we got footage of that. Um, and then these Charizard. So Mitch and yourself, you guys are pretty big into Charizard. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll have the camera zoom into this one in particular. Uh, kind of tell us more about these these Pokemon cards. Uh, I know that they're not sports cards, but in my opinion, I feel like they're they're definitely not undervalued, but they will eventually go higher up in, in value, I believe. Yes, I mean, yes, Pokemon cards, a lot of people used to think of it as it's a, it's a child's game. No, it's a collectible card game. Just like hockey, just like basketball, just like baseball. If it's a card and it has collectors, then it's a collectible item. Card, right? Hmm. Uh, everybody knows the chairs. I mean, in the, in the card collecting world, everybody knows the regular chairs are, the, uh, the hollows. First base set, base set two, whatever. There's also another, this right here, this is the Italian version, which is very rare to find uh, in North America. Like everything when he said the French version was introduced in France, Italian version in Italian. Yes, they do make it here. Uh, to find them in such a good shape, it's a super rarity. Uh, yes, are they, non-existent no you'll find them on ebay but to find them in a good shape it's very very, very right tough, yeah you know? for sure because back then when people started when pokemon first hit it was a game people were playing them people were actually get in the car for sure. laying them on the table no sleeves no nothing because it's just, when you play cards when you play cards do you put your playing cards on sleeve no mm. that's how these were treated so to find one in such a magnificent shape, it had to be a guy that pulled it, put it on a sleeve, and is like, yeah, I'm not a player. I'm just gonna hold on to this. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's definitely interesting. And we'll show the camera here, the uh, different holographic glow. At least that's what I tend to call them. Growing up, we used to always call them hollows. Mm -hmm. They are still um, called hollows, yeah. Absolutely. And then this one's really interesting to me. Probably one of the most underrated players in the NHL right now, True. Um, just because of the fact that he plays for the Dead Wings, I mean Red Wings. Um, but if you pair him with a line with uh, Alexi Lafreniere, if they do end up getting him, I feel like that's a pretty good investment, uh, especially the, the Upper Deck exclusive. Uh, so take us through uh, Dylan Larkin and, and why you picked him up. Uh, I do 100% agree with you that Dylan Larkin is one of, I could say no more than five or six players in the NHL that are way underrated mm. for their skill. Uh, I collect 
these are like some some stuff that I show you here. It's PC personal collection. These yeah. will never see the showcase. They will never be offered to anybody. My personal collection usually it's Young Gun variants and Black Future Watch autos. Cool. Yeah. Uh, this is a, an exclusive young gun, so it's a PC for me, right? It's it's not about the value. It's not about how much somebody can pay. How much somebody? I've mm -hmm. had PC items that somebody's offered me five times what I paid for them, and I said no, right? Yeah, for sure. I'm a collector too. After You're all. a collector for sure. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I had a good a guy offered it to everybody right away. A few people know what I collect right away. There. <laughs> Message me and they're like, there's this available, this guy's offering it, made the deal with the guy and got it. Okay. Another thing that I collect, oh, well, this is exclusive, same thing. Yeah. Young and exclusive. Jay Gunsel, a uh, perennial, it seems like at least yeah. perennial He's playoff hero. Another one of the very, very underrated rookies. For but sure. Not as underrated as, as Larkin. As Larkin. Right. Yeah. This one right here, these are clear cuts. Oh, gorgeous. Okay. Uh, Gorgeous, look at that. Clear cut young guns, they do come in regular upper deck packs. They are very, very hard to find. And to find a good player, it's uh, it's a bonus for me, right? So every time I get a chance to pick up a good player. Oh, for sure. Cut, Especially such a yeah. young player yeah. on a up and coming Carolina Hurricanes team. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big fan of him, but I hope he doesn't play well this playoffs because I am a Rangers fan, but. <laughs> I, I do believe he's going to win them at least one of those five games uh, just on skill set alone. Matching with Sebastian Ajo, like I said in our very first video, Sebastian Ajo is a great pickup as well. Um, and then moving on to the better of the two teams, we'll say, the okay. New York Rangers. Over here, there's another different variation. These are the acetate version, the acetate young guns. They are usually, most of the time, introduced in SP Authentic of that same year. So I managed to grab a few of them from this year. Uh, this is one of the first ones that I got was uh, Lindgren from great defenseman unfortunately plays for such a crappy team oh ouch uh, but all along I mean yes he may have a future with him I mean he's probably the star of the team oh um, ouch ouch <laughs> meanwhile there's Artemi Panarin down here I mean you got Panarin you got Mika but yeah, at least Pan Panarin right now before he was very, very under. He was on the underrated list, and now he's starting to come up. Where he For sure, be. right? I mean, any yeah. anytime you play on Broadway, you're yeah. you're going to be a superstar. And mm -hmm. uh, Artemi Panarin with the leg kick is definitely yeah. that. So, um, moving on. Yeah. These these are two absolutely gorgeous cards. Uh, probably the best player of all time and the best player right now. Yeah. Um, Connor McDavid. Uh, was this a card that you pulled or a card that you purchased? No, I purchased usually. Uh, the deal was made. This one came separately. These two came in one deal. Cool. Uh, we made a trade that, uh, and like I said, these are for sale. These are not personal collection. Mm. Uh, just highlighting some of the few stuff that come my way all the time here. Uh, this one is the Jumbo patch, which is one of the very few cards in that series that are serially numbered by hand. Wow. Uh, very rare, very sought after. Uh, they usually sell for around $300, $350. Wow, gorgeous. And this one, it's obvious exactly as you see it. It's a hand signed on card Wayne Gretzky autograph. Another very nice signature too. And I'm very particular when I pick up signatures, not because Gretzky signed it, that means I have to have it. It has to be a very nice clean signature. For sure, yeah. for sure. Not like, uh, not like a Zion where he just scribbles Scribbles his name. I, I, yeah, I, there's I quite a few that. like that. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and that's why apparently, like, one of the couple of Zion's... Why are you Zion? Zion? What's up with this? He is. You know, look at guy. What do you expect? A <laughs> uh, <laughs> couple of the Zion's that we got, we're getting in the ship, in the grading ship, and actually received 10 autographs, which I'm very excited to see, because wow. that's rare for a Zion autograph. Most of what you see are nines. Yeah. Right? Uh, a lot of it, not his fault. Some of it is. Uh, and I mean, being where you are and where you are, sometimes you, the last thing on your mind is to sign cards. So he For rushes sure. through it. Especially when you got does it. thousands to sign. Right. I, I yeah. definitely get that. Yeah. But to get us a, a Zion autograph that was uh, graded at 10 for the autograph, it's very, very cool. Hopefully the shipment will arrive and we'll share some of those. Yeah, that 
I'm yeah. sure our viewers would, would love to see that yeah. for sure. So uh, if you guys haven't already done so, shameless self plug, but smash the subscribe button, turn on bell notifications, that way you can catch that video. Um, and then moving on, these uh, Future Watch black cards are absolutely amazing, uh, especially with the silver Sharpie, it really yep. pops out. Mm -hmm. um, who do we got there? We got Gabriel Carlson. Uh, yeah, I mean, pulled up a couple just to show what they are. I have a few more. Right. Uh, these are also PC. These are what I like to collect. Are the black version of the Future Watch Auto. Uh, they are super hard to get, super hard to find, and very pricey at mm. points. Like, I mean, regular players sell two, three hundred dollars. Uh, big guys for a lot more. I managed. I had uh, a Jock Ico one. Oof which I had my arm twisted into giving it up for a very, very good friend. Uh, and right now, if you check on eBay, there's a McDavid with a asking price of $15,000, oh. I believe. A Matthews with an asking price of $12,000. So these are cards that I would love to have, just not today. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and specifically, uh, or no, that's actually not it. It was right here. This guy is pretty cool, uh, Tyler Segan. Um, you know, for all you Leafs fans out there, eat your heart outs. Um, that, that trade was one that's going to go down um, in the history books. Uh, the Leafs definitely didn't come out on the winning end of that, nor did they when they blew a 4-1 lead. But uh, just had to plug that one in there as well to give Frank a nice well, little jab. It's, it's, I mean, it, you're, it's not about the Lee fans getting it, it's, we're doing, I mean, we support the city of Boston and as crappy as they look, we always try to make them look good. We've done that twice with them, if you remember, the Toscala for a Rask trade, or a yep. Raycroft for a Tuka Rask trade, that, yeah, that looks pretty horrible on our end, but <laughs> we help, we do anything we can to make the Boston Bruins look somewhat better. Mm -hmm. And this was the second one, I mean, Let's be honest, when this trade was first made, it made sense. For sure, at okay? the time. It made sense at the time. And if you look at what Sagan did in his first two years and Kessel did in his first two years, it made sense. Uh, it was definitely a short-term deal, like it was a deal that was supposed to benefit the Leafs for the next two to three years. It was not a deal that was supposed to help the Leafs for a longer period of time, because giving up a young superstar like Sagan, it's never a good idea. Yeah, yeah, but you when you lose on trades, uh, we've won some great trades. But I don't know what is it with Boston and us making them look good, and then they end up doing what they did to us in the playoffs. <laughs> well, guys, there you have it. Uh, be sure to stick around for future episodes uh, because Frank and I definitely do want to speak about the 24 team playoff format. I know Frank is very passionate about not being a fan of that. Meanwhile, I am a fan of that, so. Definitely, uh, you're gonna want to stick around for that one. So uh, Frank and I should should have some, you know, we'll have some opinions to say the least. Uh, you can find us on Facebook under the store name FNC House of Cards Windsor. Uh, you can also contact me. I got all my information. Uh, I'm glad to help answer any questions you have. Uh, if you have any wants, specific wants, I'm a guy that knows how to get it. Uh, if there's anything specific you need, please give me a shout. And don't forget, if you haven't already, to subscribe. I like these guys, I like what they do. And we'd love to show you more of these videos and more good things to see.